Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 9 Premium Italian Battleship Marco Polo. It's coming out in 10.2 for 228,000 coal, and I'm excited to show off this game. But first, let's hear from our sponsors over at Ridge. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. Its light, sleek, and industrial aesthetic provides a minimalist design with maximized functionality. It holds up to 12 cards, plus room for your cash. There's over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. If that wasn't enough to win you over, check out the over 40,000 five-star reviews. Each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it. They'll let you test drive it for 45 days and send it back for a full refund if you don't absolutely love it. The Ridge was launched on Kickstarter eight years ago. They offer 15% off the entire store between March 14th and March 23rd. They've completely redone the design since the original Kickstarter. They have four new materials, dozens of new colors, and a much nicer logo. Get 15% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash notzer. That's ridge.com forward slash notzer and use code celebrate. The link is in the video description. All right, so let's take a look at the build and let's talk about the ship. So as far as the build is concerned, it's pretty much exactly the same as my tier nine mainline Italian battleship Lepanto. So main armor protection, lower chance of flood and fire, improved gun accuracy, faster rudder shift, concealment, and then better rate of fire. For the commander, incoming fire alert, preventative maintenance, faster gun traverse, improved AA, adrenaline rush, Emergency repair, concealment, and fire prevention. Uh, this is this is the tank build that I love to go. Uh, if I was encouraging you to go in an order preventative, then go gun traverse, uh, a drill, and then concealment slash fire prevention. Uh, the last skill that I would take on the, the tier four would probably be emergency repair, just because it's really hard to use through all five. It's basically in-game kind of skill. So, Marco Polo. 228,000 coal, 10.2. Uh, it is a SAP primarily focused battleship that excels at medium to long range. The Citadel is punishable from medium to long range, not really from point blank, but you don't have any exhaust smoke to get close for a point blank, if I'm being honest. The only time you could get close for a point blank is if they want you to get close. But overall, the main selling point of Marco Polo is that it has nine 406mm guns on three gun turrets with 1.8 Sigma, which is 0.2 Sigma better than Lepanto and the, uh, you know, the Tier 8 and I believe the Tier 10. But obviously the Tier 10 and the Tier 9, they both have more guns. Uh, but 406, the Sap Shell does a little bit more damage, which is nice, a little bit more chunky. Uh, it flies very accurately, relatively. You know, it's got good gun velocity, usable gun velocity. Uh, the range, of course, is a limiting factor for Italians. That's just the nature of it. If you don't like the range, you can extend the range out with a module, obviously. I chose not to do that because I wanted to get the rate of fire up. That is a weakness of the Italians. Uh, if you can get the rate of fire up, though, you are effective. Uh, other things that I would say before we really get into the game, obviously we're firing from range and we're just trying to pick on players that show too much side. If you wanted to use Deadeye, I would drop Emergency Repair. That is the one skill where Deadeye might give you more value early game than Emergency Repair will give you late game. Uh, with the accuracy, of course. Uh, Marco Polo is definitely trying to do damage from range in an alpha format. Uh, very similar to, you know, Vermont, Minnesota, or even Kansas, it wants to engage at range, and it wants to be accurate at range. Uh, and honestly, I think it does that quite well. And you'll see in this game how chunky the gameplay can actually be. The AA is just as you would expect. Short range, 4.6. Although effective for short range. You can't use it for anyone else. It's pretty much just self-defense. So we have this enemy, Jean Barre. And he decided to sail super far forward and then sail super far back. And we land a really nice, chunky sap shell uh, on this guy. And 
he's going to return the favor. Now, the Italians are the second best battleships in the game as far as the tankiness of the armor on the outside. It allows them to just ricochet or even fully absorb a lot of shells that would normally do damage to, oh, I don't know, the French or the Brits. Uh, so that helps when you're trying to mitigate. So the exhaust smoke is not necessarily something that you're going to miss, and many of you guys have already played with the Italian battleships. You know that exhaust smoke is not as good as maybe it could be, and that's a 9k right on the uh, enemy JB, and he's barely alive, and of course he fires on us, so we're going to drop our speed. Incoming fire alert is a really great skill to throw off a shot. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't instantly take Deadeye is because of the active maneuvering that is potentially there. Uh, and I chose this position honestly because the enemy DDs are nowhere near my position, so I should very easily be able to engage without much risk to the ship. But obviously, you're a battleship, you need DDs, you need cruisers spotting for you if you intend to safely engage targets. Mm, nice, 13,000 right on his nose. Four shells, one ricochet, but four shells on it. Not bad. In this situation, if I had Deadeye equipped, I would be benefiting 100%. Uh, as we move closer, because the enemy aircraft carrier definitely doesn't like us being here, I'm going to try and knock out the JB broadside. We're just waiting on that reload. And obviously, I want to maneuver. The Marco Polo doesn't have quite the torturers of the mainline Italians. Not saying that it's bad, it's just not as good. It's not as 25 seconds good, and ooh, very nice dodge there. Uh, very maneuverable, very, very comfortable to play. I like that about the Italians. Uh, they feel like they can, you know, go into areas of the map that other ships can absolutely try and explore, but there's a huge risk to their ship because they're just not as you know, maneuverable, and they don't feel comfortable doing that. But not here, not on the Marco Polo. Uh, so obviously, the enemy is pushing down, and A point is being captured by the enemy. Uh, we don't see him, so it's got to be a DD. Now, we're trying to punish this player who moved forward way too much. Fortunately, all we needed was one shell to hit, because that's all we got with that salvo. Uh, this is definitely, I mean, I, it's not as bad as the mainline Italians on accuracy. And it's not as bad as the Austin. That's another ship that you'll see me covering in the next video. The Austin is, uh, well, the Austin. <laughs> I don't like the Austin. It's an Atlanta hull with slightly up-armored hull, not much. Uh, for example, the Marco Polo, its armor penetration with 406 is 102 millimeters. It can Citadel the Austin, because the Citadel is 95 and it's on the outside of the ship. The Austin costs 29,000 steel, whereas Marco, he's only cold. So it's much easier for me to look at the ship and say, yeah, this is pretty fun. I would recommend this. You know, it does fairly chunky sap. Only one shell does 4,600 damage. That's pretty good. Uh, if you get in a good position, you might even do 18 to 21. Uh, and that's nice, not having to Citadel. Uh, now, you might be wondering, you fire a lot of sap. Why do you fire so much sap? I've seen XY choose to fire more AP. Sap is really good. Uh, the only reason you would want to fire AP is if you couldn't penetrate the only armor that was present. Or if the only armor that was present that you could pin, it was fully saturated, obviously that would not be an ideal situation. So that's when you switch to AP. But overall, I have no incentive to switch because there's plenty of targets that I can fire at that I can do high alpha, just like a high explosive shell from the Thunder or a British battleship. They can pretty much fire at anything they want, with one shell type, not really considering that much about switching back and forth. Uh, and that's the case with Marco Polo. Obviously, as I've said before, if you've watched my channel, the other tiers, you know, like tier 5, tier 6, 4, 5, and 6, definitely have to consider AP versus a, uh, a SAP 
when to use it versus the type of target because of the armor presented. You don't have to do that with the Marco Polo. You got a really large gun caliber and a lot of the armor schemes at high tier are all or nothing. Uh, if you just locate your shells up on the ship with the massive amount of superstructure or the bow and stern, you're going to do damage. Uh, so you don't have to be completely helpless when trying to do damage. So I feel very confident in recommending this ship for the SAP experience, for the AP. Obviously, I play Montana. I have no problem firing 406 AP. No problem. Uh, obviously, the Marco Polo looks pretty cool with the line running down the ship. Uh, unfortunately, my thumbnail didn't have it. It uh, ran out the testing. I have to wait until the patch actually comes out to see it again. Uh, but yeah, Marco Polo has been a great experience. And ooh, are we going to get this? I tried so desperately to traverse the guns. You definitely notice that the gun traversal is a little bit slower. Just enough that it is a hindrance on every shot being successful in the same way that like Lepanto would be successful. And hmm, interesting. Both of these DDs, they are being spotted through the island from a friendly. And they're actually taking out one of them. I figure, you know what? Let's just fire at them. I mean, we can fire over the island and, uh, well, that worked out. Teammate should be able to capture the base, and I'm honestly going in for a capture here. Uh, I really like the Italian armor. Marco Polo does sit tall in the water. I will say that. Compared to the mainline Italians, especially at high tier, this is a very tall ship. Easy to punish with broadside AP. I played in another match against a Alaska, and he just chunked me down because of the large wall of armor uh, but we can easily chunk other players down and if we angle right it's hard to punish because of that excessive armor that the Italians are rocking so I'm I'm pretty happy with this so far the situation wouldn't make any changes I'm hoping that I can reload my gun before the Richelieu can exit out if I was playing the Lepanto in this exact same situation I would not be able to fire on this guy before going into the island but I got so fortunate. Look at how accurate this sap shell is. Right on top of him. Go right into the superstructure and knocks him out. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, we should be able to capture this base. We have three bases to their zero. And uh, we could potentially make more plays. Now, I must admit to you, this game is not going to go as well as it looks like it's going right now. And part of the reason it's not going to is because... I'm going to die, and I'm going to die sooner than later, and that's going to come from a combination of the aircraft carrier and all these ships coming in on me, but I'm going to try and do as much damage as I possibly can, uh, but I will say, like, you don't have exhaust smoke. You are on an edge. You are overextended. You, you can't possibly recover it. Uh, obviously, the broadside's nice, but it is still Italian. So even with the .2 Sigma improvement, you definitely notice some wonky shells going wherever they want to go. Just like German dispersion. And it really impacts certain situations where it's like, I need this shell to do damage to this ship so I can win. Yeah, that's not going to happen every single time. Bismarck clearly is going to go down. So instead of the Bismarck, we're going to go after Lion. Again, locate the shells high. You definitely want to take advantage of the superstructure when firing sap. It will chunk them down so fast. Secondaries, they do pretty good. I wouldn't recommend a secondary build because obviously no exhaust. Enemy aircraft care, of course, attacking us. I expected the lion to potentially try and ram, so I'm just trying to sail intelligently, not take too much damage. Once again, locating at the superstructure. <laughs> You can clearly see it does a lot of damage. You just have to locate the shell correctly. Ooh, and speaking of a lot of damage, the Midway just did like 15,000 and added two fires to my ship. I aim at the superstructure once again. Uh, you, you, you're sensing a theme? Yes. Obviously, it's a medium to long range sap battleship. So being able to easily aim and, oh God, 
This guy's gonna wipe us out. Of course. Uh, being able to easily aim at medium to long range on a superstructure is easier said than done, clearly. Um, but it's possible. And if you get comfortable with that, you can chunk very well and be a force the entire time from medium to long, and you can go into a close range. Obviously, it takes a ton of damage. Uh, it, it relies on its maneuverability to enhance its potential against air. It's going to feel it very... It, it's a giant flat surface, and it's tall in the water. It's just easier to drop on and be accurate because the aircraft basically are flying to, to a, a deck that's higher up. So it's, it's easier to fully absorb the entire, the entirety of a dive bomb. And that, you know, that's, that's, that's part of the flavor of the ship. Yeah, speaking of flavor of the ship, uh, would you believe me if I told you this game is going to be a loss? <laughs> I can't believe it's going to be a loss because of how much of an advantage we have. But the enemy aircraft carrier, man, he's good. Plus, we've got players that are just throwing their lives away. And my teammate aircraft carrier, he is stuck broadside to an enemy taking C point. So, you know, take it with whatever. It's going to be a loss. I shouldn't have put myself in a position. I thought that my team had a larger advantage before throwing my life away. Not going to do it again. Uh, but Marco Polo... Really, really fun. I really enjoyed my time playing Marco Polo. Absolutely would not hesitate to spend 228,000 coal on it. Look, okay. knocked all those ships out, right? Yep, yeah. It's going poorly. It's going very poorly. So, Marco Polo, 100% recommend if you're into Italian battleships, or you're looking for a Tier 9 with a different experience from maybe the uh, Pomeran. It works really well. The, the sap with the shells and the way the ship plays, active maneuvering, it, it feels like a real treat. And I think that's a, that's a great compliment to that particular ship and the design that they introduced. But the Austin could not be further from that experience for me. So I wouldn't say, oh, you know, they're getting better at it, or they're making ships that feel good, but they're not crazy. Well, Austin is a pain in my behind. It is such a glass cannon. It has to play in an aircraft carrier game to get as much value as, you know, playing a Wooster or a Des Moines. They're easily way better. And that whole experience, not for me. I will obviously showcase a match with it. It has an interesting mechanic. It uses sap with main battery reload. But for my money and my time, Marco Polo, without a doubt, is the better buy. If you're looking for a ship to purchase for 10.2 and you're considering Marco Polo, you're not sure, it is a fun experience. And it is more accurate at range. And if you wanted to go a dead eye, you could probably do even more damage from range. And that's a great experience, one that I think that everyone should consider. And clearly the patch will come out, you'll see more in-game. You can decide for yourself if Marco Polo is right for you. We got five kills, 130,000, and uh, pull knots are unfortunately. So yeah, we were doing a great job for our team, and Marco Polo was excelling. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you dislike it, dislike. You can subscribe to my channel. We do World of Warship videos, first impression how-to news and review. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you and have a wonderful day.